working as a night shift security guard at an old, abandoned warehouse, I never thought I would encounter anything truly terrifying. The building, where I spent my nights, stood on the outskirts of the city and had long been the subject of local legends. It was said that this was once a manufacturing plant, but after a terrible incident that no one wanted to talk about, it was closed down. It was hard to believe, but one night made me question everything I knew about reality. The shift began as usual. I started my watch at midnight when the city was plunged into silence. The wind howled, piercing through the old walls and creaking sounds came from everywhere. I poured myself a cup of strong coffee and settled down at the monitor, watching the empty corridors and warehouse rooms through the cameras. An hour later, when the coffee began to cool and my eyes started to close, I noticed movement on one of the screens. In the far corner of the warehouse, in a room that was rarely used, a shadow flickered. I tensed up, fully awake. The warehouse was old, but I didn't expect to see anyone besides myself there. Thinking it might be a lost drifter or teenagers playing games, I grabbed my flashlight and went to check. The darkness in the corridors seemed denser than usual. Only the weak beam of the flashlight cut through it, creating eerie shadows on the walls. As I approached the place where I saw the movement, I felt a strange sensation, as if someone was watching me. When I entered the room, it was empty. Only old, dust-covered shelves and boxes surrounded me. I decided to return to my post when I heard a barely audible whisper. The sound came from somewhere in the corner. I pointed the flashlight there but saw nothing. Nevertheless, the whisper grew louder, and I could make out the words you are not alone the voice was low, sinister, and seemed to penetrate directly into my mind. I took a step back, feeling cold sweat trickle down my spine. Suddenly the flashlight flickered and went out. I was plunged into complete darkness. My heart was pounding in my chest. I tried to turn the flashlight back on, but it wouldn't respond. Gathering all my courage, I made my way to the door by touch. But when I approached it, it slammed shut with a deafening bang. I was trapped in the dark. At that moment, I heard footsteps. They were approaching, measured and heavy. The whisper filled the room again, now sounding everywhere you are not alone. You will never be alone, I felt the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. The footsteps stopped right in front of me, and I felt cold breath on my face. Through the thick darkness, the outline of a figure began to appear before me. It was a tall man in old-fashioned clothing, his face hidden by a hood. His eyes glowed with a deathly light, and I felt panic engulf me. Before I could react, he reached out and touched my shoulder. At that moment, I lost consciousness. I woke up on the floor, surrounded by darkness. My head was pounding, and I felt the cold seeping into every cell of my body. The flashlight was working again, and I pointed it at the spot where the figure had stood. Nothing was there. Everything looked as if nothing had happened. I tried to open the door, and it gave way, letting me out. Returning to my post, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Checking the monitors, I saw the figure again, standing in the center of the warehouse. This time its face was visible deathly pale, with empty eye sockets and a sinister smile. It was staring straight into the camera, as if it knew I was watching. I realized this wouldn't end so easily. Trying to distract myself, I began reviewing the camera recordings from the past few days. To my horror, I discovered that this figure appeared every night, always in the same place, always staring into the camera. But the most terrifying part was that it never moved until it noticed my presence. The next day, I decided to talk to my superiors. They listened to me but attributed everything to exhaustion and advised me to take a day off. Receiving no support, I returned to work, feeling that I needed to get to the bottom of this. I began researching the warehouse's history and found out that in the 1950s, a tragedy occurred here. A worker named David went missing after being suspected of theft. Rumor had it that his spirit still roamed the warehouse, seeking justice. Armed with this new information, I returned to the warehouse. That night, I felt more on edge than ever. Time seemed to stretch infinitely, and every rustle made me jump. When the figure appeared on the monitors again, I decided it was time to put an end to this. Taking the flashlight and a note with David's name, I went to the same place. 
When I approached, the figure appeared before me again. Summoning all my courage, I said his name. The whisper grew louder, turning into screams of pain and despair. The figure reached out to me and I felt the cold paralyze my body. But at that moment, I placed the note on the floor and said that I knew about his suffering. The screams subsided and the figure froze. For the first time, I saw its eyes fill with tears. David disappeared, leaving only cold and silence behind. I returned to my post, feeling relieved but knowing my life would never be the same. But unfortunately, this was far from the end. The events of that night turned out to be just the beginning. The next night, everything repeated. The figure appeared on the monitors again, but now it looked different. It was closer, its eyes burning brighter, and the whisper sounded louder. I realized I needed to act more decisively. I decided to conduct an investigation to find out what really happened to David. I began searching through old documents and found records of those events. It turned out that David had been falsely accused of theft and murdered by his colleagues. His body was never found and his soul remained in the warehouse, longing for justice. Now I knew what needed to be done. I gathered all the evidence and went to the same place where I had seen the figure. When I said David's name and showed the evidence of his innocence, the figure appeared again. But instead of disappearing, it began to approach me. The whisper turned into a scream you will not escape. At that moment, I felt the cold fill my body. I realized that David's spirit didn't want justice. He wanted revenge. The figure came close, and I felt my heart stop. The last thing I saw were David's eyes, burning with hatred. Then there was darkness. They found me in the morning, unconscious on the warehouse floor. No one could explain what had happened. My heart had stopped, and I never woke up again. Now I am one of those who remain in this warehouse. In the silence of the night, you can hear my whisper, warning those who dare to enter you are not alone. 